shouldn't be doing that. Welcome back to the Lost Cause Ranch. That's right, we're back with the budget Overland LR4. It's been a minute since we've had this thing going. 47 days to be exact. But today, today we change that and we take care of some major maintenance that needed to be done and get this thing ready to go overloading, overlanding, whatever you want to call it. We got some trips we want to take this summer and there were some oddball noises that would have prevented that. But it's not the typical problem you would have thought. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video. We are going to announce the winner of the hat from the video where we got the Brisco Disco stuck there. You going? It's going. Action. Oh, first start, you know. <laughs> just right just like that. Yeah, first up on the maintenance of the little budget Overland LR4 is, you know, regular scheduled timing chains. It is a five liter Land Rover Jaguar engine, so. Did you do it again? Or is there more down there? No, that's the ones I left. Oh, you I, left. I left them. <laughs> so just like every other one, it needs timing chains. We got a few other things that we're gonna do while we still have the shop. Cause as you know, we're doing the auction stuff, which brings us to another interesting thing. We put this little like crash cart together with a little hazardous fraud toolbox and most of the day-to-day -day stuff for when we cleaned out everything else for the auction. But that leaves us with this mess of the extra not day-to-day -day tools. So every once in a while we get to play, uh, where did Joe put that random tool? With these right there? I do know where the LR4 timing chain locks are, so that's good. We'll need those. She's a little loose there. Someone's already been in here. We've got some marks on all the timing stuff. So obviously this thing's only got 90,000 miles. It couldn't have been that long ago. So whoever did whatever they did last time didn't do either enough or do it correctly. So we get to do it again. And we get this fun contraption to get the uh, really tight crank bolt out. Need some leverage. She makes it until about three o'clock every day before she's got to take her nap. Why it's all apart. Okay. It appears to have the updated guides with the steel buttons that solved the wear issue on the early five liters in there. So wondering if someone just went in and threw updated guides on this guy, didn't touch the chains or anything, and we got a stretch chain because that is not good. Shouldn't be doing that. Looks like all the oilers are still intact and the chain wasn't slapping around enough to grab those and break those. So we don't have to order any additional parts. So we may have found the timing issue. Here's the old stuff. Like I said, it already had updated guides in it with the steel button, some factory tensioners, yet it was still throwing some timing codes. Ted went ahead and started putting all the new chains and guides and stuff back on, got the passenger side on there and on the driver's side on the intake gear you can see we're having an issue timing mark timing mark off a couple teeth the intake gears are the same side to side they're just flipped 180 degrees and if you look at the reference wheel that timing mark is fairly close a little less than a fingernail being this is rolled this would be the same timing mark and that guy is quite a bit off i reckon about two chain lengths off if that was rolled into the correct position that would be dead on so we busted the ultrasonic cleaner back out that was green before getting into this so it pulled quite a bit off the gear but Pulled the gear apart and it was all gunked up on the inside. That was limiting the motion. So now it springs back into place. Look at how it almost looks brand new. We also did the exhaust gear while we were at it. Probably this one's issue. It's a lot of the Land Rover five liter issues is the extended 
oil change interval. If you follow the factory recommended interval with such a thin oil, it, uh, it can cause some issues. When we pulled the tensioners off, Everything was gunked up behind there. Probably a lot of the issue on this, especially since it's already had timing chains done once. So just change your oil. But no, like 15,000 miles, entirely too long. And also um, when you're going to do something, put all the bolts back in. This little oil galley plug didn't have a bolt in it. Somehow we just managed to find all the Land Rovers that have been worked on by people who shouldn't be working on them before. What did you do there? So just wrap the spring back in place and it looks like we are now where we need to be. It's gonna work, so it doesn't. Guaranteed work. So now that gear spins freely and it can advance the cam the way it is supposed to. Just all gunked up, but uh, it'll have fresh chains either way. She is all good to go. Get the valve covers back on. We'll wait until everything's closed back up to get the intake manifold off and we'll replace all the plastic coolant housings that also break. So this guy will be all freshened up with most of the major maintenance items taken care of. So we'll have all the coolant housings replaced, water pump replaced, timing chains done. Those PCV valves, got new ones of those as well. So she'll be good to do some uh, overlanding. Overloading. Overlanding, Over overloading. So we got Ted pulling the crank lock out. But I just want to show you. So we did change the oil about 4,000 miles ago on this guy and there is what dripped out of it. Look at how black that is. This is not a diesel. So it really shouldn't be like that. We see that a lot when you go from something that either had a low quality oil or way too long on an oil change and kind of sludge things up. And when you go to a high quality oil that we use like a Motul or something along those lines, it tends to clean a lot of that stuff and grab all that sludge out of there. A couple of those oil changes makes a big difference on vehicles like that. But the first one does have a ton of garbage in it. Spin it around, timing marks are where they are supposed to be. I like the front crank seal design. It's just a little quarter turn jobber. Now this crank bolt, uh, she's, she's got some torque to it. 200 newton meters and then 270 degrees. You can gather why it needs that type of contraption. You'll see the specialty tool to do this, a Harbor Freight jack handle. And of course, most of you saw the video of the super smoky LR4 we had. That ended up being bad diaphragms on the crankcase vent valves, so preventatively, we're gonna replace them. Don't need the James Bond edition LR4. Sure most of you know that, but always break the fill free first and undo that before you do the drain because it wouldn't be good if you drained it and could not fill it. That one's a tiny bit darker. Glad we're doing that one, that's for sure. This one's an HD model, so has the locking rear diff. Ted's working on getting the control arms out now and the bolts are coming out. Normally in our neck of the woods, these can be a little bit of an issue and are seized in the bushings in there requiring either air hammer and sometimes even cutting them out. But uh, good news is this one's fairly clean. Did not need that. Spun right out, which is also nice since all our air hoses are no longer hooked up because of the auction. So we would add a string. The one in the far corner over there. So I take that back. We're stringing the air hose across. Needed the big impact to get the axle nuts off. So Ted's got the one arm in on the driver's side. We're gonna wait until after launch because we found that the boot is tore on the CV shaft. So we'll get the sphincter stretcher out and do that first. See, look at, we got some goop. Gotta make everything nice. It's 
gonna go down to a complete off-road to get an alignment afterwards, but marked out where it was beforehand, just so it'd roughly go back into about the same position. But we got shiny new arms, nice fresh boot. That was slick. Sphincter stretcher, I'm telling you, it's a good tool. So Ted's spraying off the underneath. Um, I assure you, all of it smells exactly like mud. But yeah, one thing we're gonna do once we button up our little major maintenance on this LR4 is some wool wax. We're gonna spray some of this stuff on there, which is lanolin. It's about the same as like fluid film, if you're familiar with that. But that's just gonna give it a little layer of protection underneath, especially we're in the Midwest. We're in the Rust Belt, where they love to throw salt down on everything. So throughout the winter that helps out and then even on like gravel roads or anything. So while I was stuffing my face eating lunch, uh, Ted went ahead and tore the intake manifold off. So I missed that. He replaced the little coolant housing deal. This guy, um, common failure point on these. These will leak quite a bit and uh, cause some issues between that and the water pump. Good idea to refresh these guys before it creates issues. There's been plenty of people to cook the engine because of these guys. This one was good though, but uh, we're in there, so might as well replace it. Well, we're gonna find out if we did something right here. She did something right, and she's still got a good exhaust tone. It's not going directly to the ground, so that's a good sign. So we're gonna let this guy drip off overnight and then we'll button up everything underneath. We'll get the transmission fluid changed and the diffs filled. That looks pretty good. So for the transmission, we're using Liquid Molly Top Tech 1800. We use a lot of Liquid Molly stuff in the ZF transmissions, and it has worked pretty well for us. We'll pump her up and pump her in. So we got the initial fill in, now we'll fire it up, let it get up to temp, and get it topped off while running. Someone commented that Sasha always has a guilty look on her face. She kind of does, doesn't she? I'm guessing that mainly stems from the five years of life she had before she joined the ranch. Now in there just bleeding the cooling system out, make sure that's got no air pockets in it and got nice heat inside because we want that when it gets cold out. But then um, after we get it up to temp, we're gonna dump that. Really, Sasha? You missed. You missed the you missed the mulch. But no, uh, after it's all up to temp and everything, we're gonna dump that initial fill of oil. Kind of clean out the rest of the sludge that was in there, and then we'll throw fresh oil back in. It does sound much better though, and I'm pretty excited about that. It comes out quite a bit faster when it's hot. It's kind of hard to see, but it's pretty dark. Ten minutes of runtime. Yeah, that. for just a few minutes of runtime. So obviously, still pulling some junk out of there. Got some of this Liquid Molly Sarah Tech oil additive that we're going to throw in as well. What's it say there? High performance ceramic wear protection for engine and manual transmission. So we're really happy that the manual transmission in this is going to be protected. But no, we're gonna put some ceramic inside the engine. We'll probably put some ceramic outside on the car later on too. Be all ceramic up. Protein shake. For them gains. <laughs> Big gains on the LR4. So we'll coat the underneath here, especially all the steel parts 
and it'll give them just a layer of protection. Um, it never really fully dries, so it'll self-heal if something nicks it, and it'll eventually just kind of wear off as well, especially in your high splash areas. Just gonna wet the floor down some to make cleanup a little easier. I don't know how bad this stuff is for you, but we'll at least throw a mask on. So you can see it is a vast improvement. Much more protection. So I did the frame rails, did the gas tank skid plate. And then back here you kind of saw that the paint was blown off and that's more from the fact that this has seen some gravel in its life. So just impacts from that, not from actual rotting off from the winter or anything. So got some protection back on those. This thing should be good to rip. That exhaust. Still doing well, still sounds good, but yeah, that'll work nicely. Just like this winch, the hidden winch works nicely, even though I've never used it, but I guarantee it still works. But that's mainly because Land Rovers don't get stuck and we haven't been around any Jeeps lately. And uh, Ted just pointed out, should probably actually bolt the tent on before I take off. That would be splendid. So one thing that I can guarantee now that we did that major service on it is that something's gonna break and it'll probably leave me stranded. All right, so went ahead and got the tent bolted back on, you know, with gas prices the way they are. Figured we'd take an already square, tall Land Rover and add a sail on top so we can just waste more money. I don't know how much it translates on camera, but this thing sounds nice. Quite a bit better than it did before. No rattle rattle. was a success. It's much quieter now. Runs pretty good, if I don't say so myself. It is nice not having a rattle. Um, we had to park it for a while because it was rattling enough that it was about to break. But yeah, that's gonna allow us to do some adventures with this thing this year. I'd like to get out to the West Coast. Got a bunch of you I wanna see out there. And we might hit the east side of the country as well. We're kinda in Iowa, not a ton of rovers around here. I mean, there's some but not as many as elsewhere. But that wasn't gonna be possible unless we took care of that first. So even budget stuff needs maintenance. If you guys have any suggestions on any events or anything you think we should hit up, let me know it down below and we'll kind of we'll kind of work our schedule around and see what we can make happen. It's gonna be a busy summer with everything going on. Moving shops, building shop. Why do I do this to myself? Don't even know if I can build the shop here at the house. We have the zoning meeting. We got to figure that out. I'm a genius. Good planning. But we'll get to the giveaway. Most of you are hanging around still to see who won the hat from the last video with the Risco Disco, which is still stuck on the stump right there. So we'll pull out my phone, get to the comments, and we're just going to randomly select one of you and send you a hat. So as you can see in the reflection, I'm looking away. We're just gonna go up, down, da, 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 land on one. And we've already sent Bob some stuff. So Bob, I'm sure you're right with that. We'll send you some more, or maybe we'll just bring it out. But right below that, we'll go with Mike Kenny. We'll add him for a new winner. So that's, that's two to give away. And uh, his comment, best part of the truck is a loose nut behind the wheel. I don't know if that's the best part about it, but the nut behind the wheel is definitely loose. I can agree with that. Appreciate you guys watching. Adventures coming in the LR4 soon. We'll catch you on the next one. Like I said before, it's guaranteed to break now.